If you're someone who's been pulling your hair for any length of time, you probably wonder what makes you keep doing this thing you know you really hate doing. I mean, you don't want to be pulling your hair. You know that and we know that, but you keep doing it anyway. Day after day, week after week, month after month, and for many of you, year after year. The truth. How many times have you found yourself just feeling completely disgusted and asking yourself, you know, especially after everything you've been through, why the heck you're still doing this? Well, I have some answers for you. And a bit of a spoiler here, you're not still pulling just because you have trichotillomania, you know, like that's what's been making you do it. Nope, not even close. Surprised to hear that? Well, hang on, because in this video, I'm gonna demystify this question for you. I'm gonna swing the curtains back on this. I'm gonna show you what exactly has been going on for you. I'm sure totally at the unconscious level. Because what you're gonna discover is that it's your unconscious needs that have been at play here. By the time we're done, you're gonna know exactly what's been making you pull your hair all this time and why the heck you haven't stopped yet. Sound good? All right, we'll catch you on the other side. All right, so let's start with this. You know, one of the core fundamental tenets of behavioral psychology is that people, you, me, everyone, we always do what we do for a reason. In other words, we only do things when on some level we think we're gonna get something out of it. Doesn't matter what the behavior is. Uh, now, this is true for behaviors that we like and that we're proud of, things that we're good at and may probably wanna keep doing, but it's also true for behaviors that we might hate and wish we could stop if only we knew how, like hair pulling. So if you were to know, what do you suppose you're actually getting out of your hair pulling behavior? What is it doing for you? What need are you at least trying to meet? Now, if you're not sure about this, it can be helpful to review one or more specific instances in your past where, you know, there you were and you know you were pulling your hair. So pick one of these times and places and make sure you have a specific memory. And I'm gonna ask you to step back into this experience and to play it through again, as if you're actually back in your own body, looking through your own two eyes, seeing what you were seeing and hearing what you were hearing, perhaps feeling what it's like to be back in your chair, if you were in a chair, or feeling your body in your bed, or maybe standing in front of your mirror, uh, wherever you might've been when you were pulling, and sort of you know, mentally reliving through your own eyes and through your own feelings, whatever was going on right then. So to start with, what activity were you engaged in at the time, all right? So you weren't just sitting there doing nothing. You were probably doing something there. Were you on your phone? Were you doing your homework? Were you taking off your makeup in front of the mirror? Were you worried about something? Were you upset about something? Were you trying to make up your mind about something? Most importantly, how was all this making you feel? Now I'm asking because hair pulling does not happen in a vacuum. There's always a context, right? There's always a reason why this happens when it does. So why there? What has hair pulling been doing for you in that particular situation? Now, I don't wanna just give it all away. Uh, you know, all this is really gonna be most meaningful for you if you come up with your own answers. If you take the time to really review your experience and to realize for yourself what you were hoping to get out of hair pulling right then. And you know, if you really wanna get the most out of this video, feel free, you know, stop the video right here until you come up with something and then turn the video back on because in a minute, we're gonna compare notes. We're actually gonna get into what's been going on for you, what's been really going on for you next. So now, if you think about it, that is if you really take the time to carefully review the times and places where pulling tends to happen most regularly for you, wouldn't you say that you're doing it because in those times and places, there's some level of discomfort and you're trying to change how you feel? Now, if you think through it, a lot of you will come back and say, you know, yeah, you know, now that you mention it, I guess that's true. I've either been trying to distract myself from my discomfort by tugging on or, you know, pulling out my hair, or you know what? Some of you will even come back and say, you know, I'll tell you, I know, I know why I'm doing it. You know what? I actually enjoy it. It actually feels good when I do it. Well, that may be, but either way, again, think about it. Wouldn't you say you're doing it because in those moments, in those situations, whether it's due to stress or pressure, overwhelm, anxiety, upset, uh, you know, for that matter, boredom, tedium, monotony, 
you are looking for some way to try to feel better than you were before, right? Of course. Now, here's what I want to say about that. The fact that you've hit on something that, you know, at least until now has been working for you, at least to some degree, to help you feel better, think about this for a second. That doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. It means there's something right with you. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Yeah, listen, consider that we all come wired from the factory with a built-in instinct to avoid pain. In fact, you know, there's not just one, but two prime motivators that underlie all human behavior, all decision-making, and all change. And these are, number one, the desire to gain pleasure. But you know what? An even stronger motivator, number two, the need to avoid pain. Yeah. Now, can you think of any exceptions to this rule? Can you think of anything you ever do that, you know, when you really think it through, ultimately it doesn't come down to you're really doing it, either to gain pleasure or to avoid pain? And, you know, it could be both, by the way, right? If you're not sure, again, think about it. Think about anything you know you do again and again and again, and just challenge yourself to think about why you do that thing. Some things will be obvious, like, you know, you watch that TV show or you binge that series on Netflix because you enjoy it, right? It feels good to be entertained. That one's not complicated. But how about brushing your teeth every day? I'll bet you do that, at least I hope you do. Now, why are you doing that? Are you doing it because you love taking the time to stand there and brush? Eh, you know, probably not. Now, you may not mind, you know, how nice and fresh, minty fresh, your mouth feels when you're done, but I doubt that's what you're thinking about when you finally break down and head off to the bathroom to take care of it, right? Now, my guess is you're probably thinking to yourself, oh man, this is something I gotta get over with. But why? Well, I'll tell you why. Because part of you knows what would happen if you didn't. Yeah? You're thinking about how your teeth are going to feel and how your mouth is going to feel if you don't brush. And, you know, you may, you may wait for a while, but eventually you're going to get to it. Why? Because, you know, if you don't, eventually you're going to have to endure an even greater discomfort and even greater pain. My point is, again, without any exception that I can think of, everything we do, including hair pulling, is motivated either by a desire to gain pleasure or a need to avoid pain. Isn't that interesting? But then you think about it and you say to yourself, but wait a second, if I'm pulling my hair to avoid pain, you know, so I can distract myself from the stress, I don't know, associated with my job or my schoolwork or a tough relationship or all the things I gotta do today, but wait a second, Pulling my hair gets me pain. I hate doing it, and I ha hate how I feel after I have done it. Well, of course, that's the conundrum, isn't it? It's interesting. Listen, none of this makes any logical, rational sense. That's because your brain, that is the unconscious part of your brain, and that's the part of you that's always moving toward pleasure and avoiding pain, that part of you doesn't operate on the basis of logic or rationale. That is solely the domain of your conscious mind. But it's not your conscious mind that's driving the bus on this hair pulling thing. It's your subconscious mind. If it was your conscious mind, you would have stopped long ago because consciously you know darn well, you know, the fact that you're continuing to pull your hair even after all the bad things you know it does to you doesn't make a lick of sense. So you have to ask yourself, how effective is this particular strategy, this particular way of avoiding pain? If you think about it, you probably realize that, you know, when it comes down to it, all you're really doing is nothing more than just trading in one pain for another. So does it really help? Do you really feel better now that you've been pulling your hair than if you'd you know, found any other way at all, I guess, to disallow it? That's the question you get to ask yourself. I think you know what the answer is. And if the truth is, you know what, it doesn't help. I absolutely do not feel better after I pull. In fact, I feel worse. Then the question has to be, what are you going to do about it? Next time you show up in these contexts where hair pulling has been a predictable part of your routine, are you just going to get in there and start pulling the way you always have? Or do you think it might be more likely to stop, at least for a moment, realize what you're doing, and maybe think about what you learned here in this video, and consider what other options you might have available to you instead? I think you know what the answer to that question has to be. Now, if you want some help along the way with this, do feel free to reach out to us. We're always here for you. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please go ahead and pound that like button and please do subscribe to our channel. We'd love to be able to notify you when we have new content, more helpful videos coming your way. You know what? Go ahead and hit that reply button below. Leave us a comment. Talk to us. How did this video impact you? 
If you're watching this video on our Facebook community page, please leave a comment there. We'd love to meet and chat with you. In fact, if you have questions about trichotillomania or hair pulling in general, and you're just not quite sure where to go for answers, please visit our website at www.trick-free.com. You'll see a contact us link at the upper right of all of our web pages. We do actually look through all the questions that come into us very carefully, just like we do to all the comments and questions that show up here at our YouTube channel. And we do our best to answer as many of those questions in these very videos as possible. Again, please do be sure to like and subscribe. We're here to entertain, inform, and most importantly, to empower you to begin taking control of your hair pulling in ways you probably never thought possible before. If you'd like to reach out to us directly to get some information about how we can help you or a loved one, feel free to visit our website, again, at www.trick-free.com. If you'd like, you can write to us at relief at trick-free.com. And you can also call us at any time of day or night, toll free at 833-TRICK-FREE. I gotta tell you, I love the rhyme. I love it. Thanks again for watching. I'm Robert Mantell with the Trichotillomania Relief Specialist. Here's wishing you an amazing trick-free week.